most Christians and even their pastoral leaders aren't really sure how they should think biblically about the whole complex of issues surrounding Jesus, the church, and the Jewish people, not to mention the modern state of Israel. On the one hand, this should not be surprising since the Bible itself refers to God's dealings with Israel as a mystery. But on the other hand, whereas other topics in the Bible which are called mysteries have been explored consuming oceans of ink and forests of trees, the mystery of Israel and its relationship to Jesus has not received this kind of attention. In fact, only one rather simplistic view of this mystery, sometimes referred to as supersessionism, that is, the church supersedes Israel or replacement theology, the church replaces Israel, emerged early in the history of the church as the church father systematically jettisoned all things Jewish. It remained the unchallenged reigning orthodoxy for 17 centuries. A few voices opposing replacement theology appeared shortly after the beginning of the Protestant Reformation with its fresh emphasis on studying the scriptures in their original languages. But it was with the advent of a radical alternative called dispensationalism, proposed by an Anglican clergyman named John Nelson Darby around 1830, that we witnessed the first systematic challenge to supersessionism. Dispensationalism proposes that God dispenses his requirements and dealings with different peoples in different times and in different ways. For example, how God dealt with Israel under the dispensation of law has nothing to do with the church during the current dispensation of grace. This view shot to prominence among evangelicals in the early 20th century through the Schofield Reference Bible, later through Hal Lindsey's Late Great Planet Earth, and most recently through the Left Behind series of novels and movies. However, for a variety of reasons, it has recently fallen out of favor, and now many Christians find themselves in sort of a uncomfortable intellectual limbo on how to think about this important mystery. The good news for all of us is that in our generation, a robust re-engagement with this mystery is finally underway. A quiet revolution has been taking place in academic circles as scholars are sifting through the myriads of new archaeological discoveries and recently translated portions of the Dead Sea Scrolls to give us a clearer picture of Second Temple Judaism at the time of Jesus. What has emerged from this third quest for the historical Jesus is a picture of a very Jewish Jesus whose first followers were all Jewish and whose gospels and letters testify not to the replacement of the Jewish people and their aspirations, but the beginning of their realization. Indeed, a 2008 article in Time magazine listed re-Judaizing Jesus as one of 10 ideas that are changing the world. While I have been enthralled to read these scholarly works, I've grown increasingly frustrated that I've not found a sort of one-stop shopping book that gathers the distilled essence of all these rich insights into one short accessible volume. My new book, Jesus and the Olive Tree, Reengaging the Mystery, serves as a sort of cliff note summary of this more holistic, biblically consistent telling of the big story of God's purposes for Israel and the nations. Armed with this knowledge, you will have a new sense of the unity between the Old and the New Testaments and a deeper grasp of the hope of the Christian faith. At the same time, it will help you avoid the errors of historic, supersessionistic, anti-Jewish readings of Scripture as well as the complicated charts and overwrought prophetic speculations that have too often accompanied classic dispensationalism. I pray that you will experience the same awe and joy that I have as you re-engage with the mystery of Jesus and the olive tree.